28 years, the Namibian government has purchased 517 farms or 3 million hectares of land at a cost of 1.8 billion Namibian dollars to resettle the landless. The government boasts about reaching 62% of its target to purchase 5 million hectares of resettlement land by 2020. But a closer look at the numbers isn't impressive. You've resettled 5,300 people, but the people that you need to resettle are 243,000, yes. according to your own estimates. Yes. That is a 2% success rate. Some people would say it's actually a failure rate. Well, um, it is. It, uh, it, it has not worked as we wanted, as I said, because of those escalation of prices. By an escalation of prices, the minister is referring to the impact of the willing buyer, willing seller approach to acquiring farms, which is enshrined in the Namibian constitution. There's a very interesting historical reason why a market-based approach was tried out in southern Africa. And of course, in, for Zimbabwe, it was part of the Lancaster House Agreement uh, in 1980, which uh, was the basis of independence. So it was a compromised independence that gave rise to a willing buy, willing seller approach. And then the World Bank came to South Africa in the early 1990s and said, we should follow the Zimbabwean model. Uh, similarly, international donors and international financial institutions went to the Namibia Land Conference in 1991 and promoted uh, a, a market-based land reform. Why? Well, of course, all three were negotiated transitions. Nobody won these liberation wars outright. There wasn't a revolution. These were negotiated transitions in which the status of property rights of, of white minorities were actually the centerpieces of those negotiations. That was the compromise in order to, to, to give Namibia its independence. That was the compromise resolution. And the pressure came through the Western Contact Group. They had significant interest here. Of course, they wanted to protect. And, uh, and as freedom fighters, we were also tired of, of staying in the bush. It's better to fight from inside rather than from outside. And that is a strategy we adopted. Let's go home and let's, let's negotiate and see what we can do in the process. How do you then respond to criticism today that former liberation movements like yourselves sold out? No, definitely not. As that I said, you overcompromised? No. That never. you shouldn't have accepted willing buyer, willing seller? No, there was no other alternative. We were fighting, you were fighting the Western uh, countries with sophisticated arms, sophisticated technology. And you are just a freedom fighter carrying a gun on your back. According to government figures, Namibia has transferred more land into middle-class black hands through the Affirmative Action Loan Scheme than it has through its resettlement program for the poor. Most cabinet ministers do have a, a, a commercial farm. So Willem Woodendahl is a lawyer at Namibia's Legal Assistance Centre, specialising in land litigation. The, the, the ratio between land being made, uh, made available through the Affirmative Action Loan Scheme process and the resettlement process is stood at one to four. So for every one farm that has been made available for resettlement purposes, four farms were made available um, for the uh, two uh, Affirmative Action Loan Scheme farmers. The Minister of Land is unabashed about being a beneficiary of government-owned Agribank's loan yes. scheme. Ministers can apply through the Bank, Agricultural Bank of Namibia. I did the same. I applied for a loan. I had a few animals and, and I'm farming. And farming is not that you just get a farm. You must be willing to work. It's hard work, commitment. Do you work on your farm? Yes, I do. Is it successful? Well, it, well, it's not successful, but at least I'm making some progress. He tells me his cattle farm has doubled in value to more than two million in the time he's had it. Omitara resident Frida Namboya made no such progress in her brief experimentation with farming. She became a beneficiary of land reform when she was resettled on a government purchase farm in 2014. 36 years old at the time, Frida, a former farm worker and mother of 10, was allotted land in the Omaheke region, some 200 kilometers northeast of Omitara. She was among a group given a patch of ground 
and goats to breed. So when when you go to some of these resettlement farms, um, what you find essentially is that people are there squatting uh, on a piece of land that they're unable to farm, um, mired in poverty, and you know it's, it's it's quite a tragic sort of situation that they find themselves in. When they um hearing even is it good for broken in is a sand ne the cloud. Hele raak lang en dan begin die bokke loop met die knie. Ons het met die baie bokke gegaan, maar soos ek nu... Hoeveel? Myne was 19 bokke, wat ek saam gevat het. Waar is die bokke nou? Hele frik. But some has succeeded. Those who got 19 goats, as you say, if you look after them very carefully, in a year or two, they will multiply. But some families also always like to depend on government for handouts and, and that is also another challenge which we need to address. I asked Frida if they had received any kind of training. The Namibian government appears to be moving further and further away from its post-independence promises to transform poor black lives through land reform. What has in fact happened now is that the government seems to be aiming towards creating a black middle class farmer. So it's known that in this environment there was a four places that were copied. And the people who have been arrested is the people who can sell a place to be cost. The challenge is that sometimes we buy very expensive farms. Some of the facilities uh, those who were run by a white compressor are quite sophisticated. You cannot just bring a person from an informal settlement, put him there, and hope that he will succeed to farm. We would like to resettle people who will really make a significant contribution to the GDP. How do you respond to those who resent the fact that you're a minister, you can look after yourself, but you're benefiting from land reform? and that land reform should actually be benefiting the poorest the most. If you, you, you give a farm, a, a very expensive farm, for example, to a poor person, how will he run it? But what support yes. they would be able to run it? No, not If everybody. your loan was given to everybody. a poor person not and he, get, he got all the support, the training, the support, and they were willing to work hard, surely you could uplift some people out of poverty. Well, you see, you, development doesn't, even it has been proven everywhere. You, you have to develop your middle class, you have to develop the entrepreneurs, you have to create that culture. And then through that, you, you, you get more revenue, and with that revenue, you help the poor. This year, Namibia is set to hold its second land summit since independence. It's been postponed several times. The minister expects expropriation and ancestral land rights to dominate discussions. Uh, when we started our land reform program, we went to Brazil. We looked at what they did with their affirmative action. We went to Zimbabwe. We went to South Africa. We are sharing all these But do you make issues. the same mistakes? Well, it's difficult. It's, <laughs> it's a trial and error. I, I think, you know, the time, time for error all the margins for error should come to an end now and we should move on to to be serious about you know um, about the the agricultural sector yesterday formal liberation movements used the land to gain support use the land question to popularize themselves got the support of the ordinary person, got international support. 
they used it against the whites. And the enemy was the white man and the white woman. They got into power. People remember that yesterday, you and I were speaking the language of land return and land reform. What has changed today? You have assumed the place where the white man was and you don't care.